Lasagna was one of the first dinner recipes I took the time to recreate using ingredients that we like. I have been making the same version over the past 25 years. These days, I don't make lasagna as much as I used to, but rather I've transitioned to making my own pasta noodles following the Southern Italian styles, keeping it simple with very few ingredients. Today I'm sharing a recipe for a two ingredient spinach and semolina flour lasagna pasta noodle. You can use these noodles in your favorite lasagna recipe. This recipe makes about a pound of pasta. The great thing is that you can make any pasta shape from this recipe. For the ingredients, you'll only need two plus water, frozen spinach that has been thawed, semolina flour, and water. First, thaw 150 grams, which is five to six ounces of frozen spinach by setting it in the fridge overnight. Place it in a strainer, as you see here, and drain it by lightly squeezing the spinach to remove any excess water. Place the spinach in a food processor, and we're gonna blend it until it is smooth and broken down, which will take 30 seconds to a minute. You might need to stop, scrape down the edges of the bowl as needed. You can see that's broken down into pieces, but I did start with chopped spinach, so that helps. Add 300 grams, which is about two cups of durum wheat semolina flour to the spinach. You're gonna blend the mixture again until it's grainy and combined. Scrape down the edge of the bowl as needed. Okay, there's a well dispersed mixture of spinach within the semolina flour, but notice it's very, very dry. Now we need to add the moisture. So you will add likely up to a half a cup of water, but start with a quarter of a cup, which is 59 milliliters. Blend again for 30 seconds. The mixture should start to stick together. It's starting to form a ball, but we do need to add a little bit more moisture because semolino flour will absorb a lot of liquid and we wanna make sure this is moist enough and not too dry as we're kneading it. At this point, you can start adding a tablespoon at a time until your mixture forms a ball. Check it out. We've got a nice ball formed in the machine. If it feels too moist, you can always add more semolina flour. Go ahead and flour work surface. You can use semolina flour or just regular all-purpose flour. It's whatever you have. Sometimes I've kneaded this only with semolina flour. Other times I've used all-purpose flour. But if you don't have as much semolina flour, then just go with regular flour. In fact, a lot of pasta recipes have a combination of semolina and regular flour anyway in the recipe, so it doesn't really matter what you use. And then go ahead and remove the dough from the bowl. And knead for seven minutes. If your dough feels a little bit too moist, add flour as you go. If it feels too dry, add a little bit of water, one tablespoon at a time until you get to the consistency where it's not super dense, but it can roll like you would bread. It's gonna be a little bit dense because we don't have all those extra ingredients and semolina flour is a bit coarse. That's our seven minutes. You can see it's not sticky, but it is tacky. We wanna cover the ball with a towel or plastic wrap and just let it rest for about 20 minutes. Give it time to relax so that we can roll it out. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Dust with a little bit of semolina flour or regular all-purpose flour to keep the lasagna from sticking and then set this aside. You can simply just flour the pan without paper, but paper helps to manipulate the pasta in and out of the pan. So at this point, you can roll out the dough in the shape that you want for making different pasta shapes. You could use this dough for any pasta that you want to make. Strip pasta like tagliatelle, fettuccine, bow tie pasta, it's whatever you want. We're going to make lasagna out of this pasta today. And you could also use a pasta machine. I'm gonna be doing this by hand using a rolling pin, but if you have a pasta machine, go ahead, that rolls it up flat, use that if that's what you have access to. Divide your dough into thirds. You can weigh it or you could just eyeball it. Place one third on a lightly floured surface Place the other two on a plate or dish and then cover them so that they don't dry out and set them aside. 
You're going to use a rolling pin and start rolling out the dough, keeping your work surface floured so that the dough doesn't stick. You're going to roll this dough out to larger than a 9 by 13 inch rectangle because you need to trim off the edges to get down to a 9 by 13 as the edges will likely be rough and we want to have a perfectly uh, shaped rectangle. You want to roll your dough about as thin as you can get it. Lasagna noodles come in different widths and textures. Some are flat, others have ruffled edges like Ruffles potato chips. Any and all are acceptable in making homemade lasagna. The ridges are thought to hold the sauce and cheese in place better than just straight ones. You're looking for about a 1 16th inch thick, which is about half the size of the thickness of a nickel. Once you get a little bit bigger than 9 by 13, you can go ahead and start trimming it, your dough down to where you have about 13 by 9. You can save the dough for rolling out with the other remaining dough. I've cut this down to the size of my 9 by 13 lasagna pan. You can make these any widths or lengths that you want if you're using two smaller pans that just make the width and length the size of your smaller pan. You're basically just going to cut the length into thirds. You can eyeball it or you can cut using a ruler or bench scraper. And then I just use a pizza cutter. You could use a ridged cutter like a fluted wheel. And then you just cut like that. And there you are. You have your lasagna strips. This is what it would look like in the pan. It might be just a little bit bigger, but you're probably going to parboil them anyway. And if so, it's okay. They'll likely shrink once you add them to the water. But then you've got a nice coverage of lasagna strips in your pan. Then, once you've cut all your strips, then just place them on the lightly floured paper lined pan if you chose to line your pan with paper. Notice how thin they are. So they're fairly thin, quite a bit thin. They will soak up water so they will thicken up as they are baking and as you parboil them if you choose to parboil. We have three strips, one layer of lasagna made. And then I like to place wax paper or parchment paper over the top to keep them from drying out until I finish rolling out all of my lasagna. Then you just keep rolling out the remaining dough and making noodles like this. All right, I just finished my second dough ball there. And I'm just going to add semolina flour, just dust it on the top of the wax paper of the other. And then just place these on top of that flour. And then repeat. Most lasagnas have three layers of noodles, and this is our third layer of noodles, but I have more dough left over, so we may be able to get another three or four noodles out of this batch. So those are extras in case you have one that falls apart or you want to use it for something else. This is my last bit of dough. I was able to get 12 noodles out of that batch with a little bit of dough left over. Now, you may get more or less depending on how thick you roll your dough, or how thin you roll your dough, rather, and your moisture level in the dough. But your lasagna noodles should look something like this. I'm gonna add one more sheet of wax paper. That's it. The best thing about homemade pasta is that you have options like flavor, shape, size, and how to cook them. There is a debate among the professionals as to whether or not to parboil lasagna noodles. Homemade pasta holds more moisture than dried, so some say parboil them first so they don't soak up all the sauce during baking in the lasagna pan. It's totally up to you though. You can make fresh pasta noodles and assemble them immediately in a baking dish with the lasagna ingredients. Eat them immediately, dry them out, refrigerate them until tomorrow, or freeze them for later. See the recipe in the description below for details on how to cook and preserve them. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing. Until next time, make a batch of fresh pasta noodles, serve them with your favorite sauce, and go bake the world.